Sports are really important vehicles for relationships. We have purpose. We have a why. We bring people together. We connect. I feel like God is our greatest supporter and our greatest coach. This is Rabbi Ere Sherman and Rabbi on the sidelines. This week, we are joined by an Israeli basketball legend and a legend in the world of college basketball from the family of the Yukon Huskies, live from Amirim in the northern part of Israel. We welcome Daron Sheffer. Daron, it's so great to have you. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, except I told you before we came on that uh, you ruined my dreams in uh, seventh grade, the last time I saw you in person at the Carrier Dome. Actually, UConn was about to be the number one team in the country. I believe Kansas and I think North Carolina had just lost. And if you beat Syracuse, you would have been number one. And you did it. Do you remember that game? I uh, can recall something, you know. It's, it's, it's been a while. It's been, it's a, been while. a while, but it's on YouTube. <laughs> um, but we are here to talk about basketball, but we're here to talk about sports and faith. This idea that sports is beyond just the basketball. And I know in your own life, you have taken that journey of faith from the courts to the Beit Knesset, to the community. So I want to go back to your life growing up in Israel um, as a secular Jew in Tel Aviv. Was there any Judaism faith in that piece or was it all basketball? What did your life look like growing up on and off the basketball court? Yeah, we, we had, uh, I, I grew up, you know, uh, experiencing experiencing the holidays you know like probably most kids in in israel and celebrating and rosh hashanah and sukkot but uh, and Pesa, passover obviously uh, but but not not much more than that i, I didn't uh, had any uh, too much connection with, with the religion world you know uh, hearing hearing about the shabbat or about the uh, talmud torah or or, or <coughs> praying or god and, and actually, I was pretty much cynical about things that I couldn't understand with my mind, and uh, and God was one of them. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, what what changed my 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 perspective or opened something in my mind was a very special experience at UConn. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, actually, a few of them. One of them is um, is uh, a book that uh, my mother sent me. Right uh, to to Israel. I thought I think it was one of your questions. Yeah. What, yeah. What, so uh, what what was that book that your mother sent you that maybe yeah, changed your uh, life? The, it's it's a book wrote um, uh, James Garfield, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the the celestial prophecy. It's a spiritual journey of a, of a woman, and I don't recall and remember much uh, details of the book, but I I do remember it touched me in a very deep place in my heart, in my soul, and uh, you know, let me. Uh, feel a d deep uh, feeling of, of peace or serenity. And uh, it was, I think, um, you know, a point in my journey that uh, something uh, ignited inside of me, you know, like, like it lit a fire. And, and I started from that point, you know, not obviously slowly, slowly and step by step, but uh, uh, looking and searching for a different kind of uh, uh, tools or inspiration people to, to try to, uh, I told myself, you know, if I have this good uh, place in my heart that can live peacefully and, and in serenity with myself, with, with the world around me, I want to try and explore it and try to live like that, not in a just in a, a, a single experience when I read the book, but to bring it more and more into the life. And I think that was the start of the spiritual journey that became the Chuva journey that mm -hmm. led me after a journey to India and Buddhism and South America and shamanism back to the roots to Judaism. So what about the basketball journey from zero to 12? There's a beautiful clip that we're going to watch in a moment that basketball was your life. What was the entry into that? Was it your parents saying, Daron, you got to get on the court? Or was it you that just love the ball? What was that love? And what, what was that journey? It's a... Uh... Yeah, it was a natural gift that I, you know, I, but, but actually not only with the basketball game. I played also soccer and, and, and went to youth group. I was, you know, it was a part of, of life. For me, I, I don't recall that I had any dreams about being a, a professional basketball player. You know, I actually even <laughs> prayed not to, 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 uh, 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 grow so tall because I always felt uncomfortable me being the, the highest uh, you know student in class. 
So it was something for me, it was a big challenge to, to deal with all the attention I drew. And uh, what changed my mind regarding basketball, because I thought to, to you know, to stop playing at uh, age of 16, 17. But then they invited me to the Israel uh, youth national team, mm. the best 12 players in Israel until the age of 16. And then for the first time in my life, I played in the European championship against the best players in Europe. <coughs> and I saw I, I compete against them, you know, as equal. And that was before I put any energy and uh, and, and in the game, extra, you know, didn't come early, didn't leave uh, late, just played uh, on my basic nat uh, natural talent and, and gift I got. And at that point, I said, look, there's something special that I should try and utilize and see how far will I go with it. And that was the point I became much more serious and uh, professional about the game. Uh, so let's look at that, uh, a little clip of your life from zero to 12 and Israel realizing that their own Sheffer existed. היו היה, לפני שנים, ילד רזה וכחול עיניים שאהב לשחק בכדור. כל יום היה משחק עם חברים בשכונה וממשיך להתאמן לבדו עד שחשיכה בלעה את המגרש. השמועה על הילד המוכשר חצתה כבישים ומחוזות, ולא עבר זמן רב לפני שעסקני כדורסל התחילו לפקוד את בית משפחת שפר. ב-12 השנים הבאות המשחק שאהב השתלט על חייו וידחק הצידה את כל השאר. בגיל 18, דורון עזב את הבית לשחק כדורסל עם הגדולים. מסביב לאולם בכפר בלום נפלו טילים בשם קטיושה, והביצועים של נסיך הכדורסל החדש היו אחת הנחמות הבודדות של הצפון. But also the second part, right? You're 18, you go to Kfar Bloom up north, and basketball is a distraction to what's going on in the world with Katusha rockets falling. How do those go hand in hand? When you're playing at UConn, we're not worried about rockets falling. But in Israel, what is the, the national feeling of basketball that allows people to have an escape sometimes? Uh, yes, you know, they, when, when life uh, sometimes becomes intense and uh, so obviously uh, uh, playing the game or, you know, watching the game can be, you know, a kind of uh, escape or, you know, help people uh, um, uh, get the, their mind busy with other things. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it was, you know, a challenge time, you know, uh, the, the Jewish people, the Israeli people, you know, uh, Unfortunately, we know a lot about wars during the years and the history. And we hope and we pray that, you know, uh, the, the, the peaceful times are, uh, are coming and ahead of us. And you went to the army, I believe, before UConn. Is that correct? No, during, uh, before UConn, yes. Before right. UConn. So you are not a typical 18-year-old freshman who went to a prep school yeah. in New Hampshire and then showed up at UConn. What did that army experience in the Tzahal, how did that, when you get to UConn and you're playing with Ray Allen, Donnie Marshall, Daniel Marshall, Kevin Ali, right? Are you sharing that experience of, hey guys, for the last three years, I was in the Israeli army protecting the Jewish state. Did that ever come up in conversation with your new UConn teammates? Yeah. It didn't because I actually didn't, didn't make an ordinary service army because uh, I was... Um, I was an uh, um, excellent basketball player, a, a national team basketball player, and, and because of that, I got special condition in the army. So I don't have many uh, uh, things to share about it. Most of the time I played basketball. So I, I, gained, I gained the experience, but I wasn't that typical soldier protecting Israel, but you know, representing them on the basketball court. And so then take us to when you realized that you could actually play college basketball. Not many kids in this country of America. I live down the street from Pauley Pavilion. Not many kids are going to be able to play for UCLA, even though every child sitting in my office who wants to be a bar mitzvah, I say, what do you want to be? I want to be the next Doron Sheffer. <laughs> take us through the recruiting. Was it only UConn and Coach Calhoun that recruited you? Were there other colleges? How did you make that decision that UConn was the right 
one for you? Yeah, the, you know, uh, like I said, after Nadav Ehrfeld, so the market to Israel got opened and really uh, coaches started to be interested in, in, in what's happening overseas and in Israel, especially, obviously, Calhoun and Connecticut, but also other uh, uh, universities. I was recruited by, by five of them. Uh, and I came to make a tour in the U.S. to visit. It was Miami with the, oh, wow. uh, Hamilton, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, That's now he's in Florida State. Yep. Yeah, it was um, um, uh, Don Cheney in Philly. Uh, oh, a temple. A temple. Temple, yeah. Oh. And then in Kentucky with Rick Patino. Really? Uh, yeah, and Seton Hall with PJ, Carlissimo, and Calhoun with Connecticut. And actually, my, my, my first uh, priority was Kentucky. And, you know, uh, we make plans and God has other plans for us a lot of times. And, you know, something didn't work out with the exams and I find myself at UConn and, uh, you know, eventually it, it was, uh, <laughs> those years became very, very special and successful in, 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 in many ways. So what was it like showing up on a college campus in America? This is not Hebrew University, Ben Gurion University. Those are amazing. All of our Jewish students go over there. But you show up at UConn, it's not the largest Jewish community. How did that feel? And when did you realize that not only I can play, but I'm going to lead this team to the number one ranking in the country? Yeah, it was, it, it, it took step by step, you know. Uh, many times when I make a change in my life, uh, a lot of time, you know, I, it takes time until I adjust, sometimes uh, uh, <laughs> faster, sometimes less. But uh uh, I remember the first month, you know, it was like a cultural shock, you know, uh, uh, many students younger than me, not only in, uh, on the age, but also, you know, with, with the sharing common conversation, you know, not, not necessarily I find with many, many uh, uh, students, but, and then I find myself, you know, a lot with either, you know, uh, uh, teammates, but also either foreign uh, students or mm -hmm. uh, older than me or my age. Yeah, uh, uh, and so uh, slowly, slowly, I, I felt more and more comfortable. Comfortable, you know, with the food, with the habits, with the, with with all the changes. And I think, you know, a month after I came, even even before the league starts, I felt that I made the right decision. You know, I felt home in a way that you know uh, there was a Jewish family that helped me. Uh, Oh, wow. uh, the Zan family, yeah, they took me like, you know, like a son and people helped me to feel uh, at home. And, and you know, I felt it was really uh, a right thing to do, not not only because of basketball, but uh, because of other things. And I think maybe the best thing I took from that, other than obviously many great people and friends. And, you know, like I said, it's a Husky family until today. I can, uh, um, when I come to the U.S., I talk, we, 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 we visit, we see each other at times. Um, uh, but uh, something very um, um, special that happened to me during uh, uh, my time that is, was the realization that my home is Israel. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to get far away from something to appreciate it more. And something that, you know, knew that this is not my home and my home is in Israel. And uh, it was clear for me after my career basketball in the U.S., I'm, I'm coming back home. So we're going to look at uh, one of the highlights, Dick Vitale, an amazing college basketball announcer. When he sees a PTP or a primetime player, he says it loud and proud. And this is from a game at UConn against Syracuse. Hi, Mike. We just talked about Knight, you and I off the air. How does he become such an improved player? You mentioned hysteria. It's H squared here. Hoops hysteria. Semper! Yes, hey! He looks at the three and knocks it down. Jerome Sheffer. It's walking time. What does that feel like when you have 20,000 people screaming your name that their own Sheffer, baby, it's, it's the ice man. What's that like? It's a big, it's a big challenge not to get lost in this um, hype, you know, uh, not, not to get lost when they cheer you and not to get lost when they boo you, you know, it's a, there's two sides to this coin. Uh, and unfortunately <laughs> we, we most of the time won games. So, you know, they were cheering. But uh, it's a big challenge. It's it's not an easy challenge at all. And uh, you know we see uh, great players and and an adult person that a lot of time uh, uh, find it's very difficult to stay balanced in this situation. You know a lot of uh, attention, a lot of uh, like you said, twenty thousand people in the arena, and more more a lot more uh, back home. Uh, I think that that was the the. 
the the real challenge game in 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 the basketball yeah to, to mm-hmm. the game of life i call it today to stay yeah. balanced and not to get lost not with each year and start to get uh, uh you know uh, feel uh, how do you say in english uh, arrogant uh, arrogant again, yeah arrogant about it and on the other side when you lose not to forget uh, you know to take it in the right perspective and always uh remember that um win or lose you know you 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 it's important how you deal with it and not mm-hmm. necessarily you know sometimes you can lose you can win the game but you lose a bigger game yes. you know if you if you behave selfish and you give bad example and sometimes you lose and you win because you mm-hmm. lose, you lose the dignity and you and you and you stay uh, you know you shake hand so there's a bigger game that we play we have to remember it and, and remind ourselves and others that Uh, in this basketball game because it's easy to get lost on the win and lose or, or, or uh, issue. Actually, I think it reminds us of Moshe Rabbeinu Ishanav, a humble person that he yeah. was at the highest of uh, Har Sinai and Parshat Yitro that we'll read this week, but also at the lowest of uh, Avadim Hainu. And we were uh, slaves in, in Egypt as well. And he was able to ride the roller coaster while also staying calm and in essence, leading a team, <laughs> leading a team to, uh, to, to, the, to the promised land. Um, something with Coach Calhoun that maybe, uh, what was a lesson that he taught you? You know, we see him screaming on TV, Hall of Fame coach. Uh, what's a lesson that you saw behind the scenes that we all should know about Coach Jim Calhoun? So, yeah, I think first of all, he really uh, demand 100% from himself and, he could, uh, and because of that, he could add, demand it from others. And he really, uh, you know, uh, In that aspect uh, um, arise this point you know of, of you know if I play basketball give it give hundred percent of myself you know I think I took it to another level uh, with him and and um, something that that I, a story I tell I also wrote it in in, in the, one of my books that uh, you know everybody talk a lot about you know how intense he was and you know sometimes screaming and you know obviously was super professional. And um, demanding from 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 himself from the players uh, so it's 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 a you know muscular side of him you know uh, aggressive and uh, but I remember that every time we went to games we used to go by the bus together and he was sitting in the first row and his wife pat uh, near the window and he was sitting near her and as soon as the bus stopped we arrived to the hotel or to, to the arena he used to stand up and And give his wife room to let down all the players wait behind him you know like a double pick his wife is going and and you learn a lesson of after there's the after but the first as as it was a great lesson and in an event very gentle way a very a sensitive way and that's a beautiful part of coach that not maybe a lot of people you know but I just want to translate that for our viewers. To love your neighbor as yourself, but really to love actually your best friend, which is your wife, as uh, you would love yourself. Um, I don't know if Dick Vital has ever said on ESPN, but hopefully in the next, uh, when Calhoun is, has his next induction. Uh, that's a beautiful, beautiful lesson. And I think it's actually what you wrote, that basketball is a teacher of life. It's yeah. not just a teacher of the physical. Um, I want to go... To a little more of your personal journey um, that I think maybe a lot of people don't know after they saw you play Yukon and Maccabi Tel Aviv and uh, Kvar Bloom, um, your journey through cancer and your journey through illness, which also Coach Calhoun has, uh, went through that himself. Um, what was that journey like and how did you find the Emuna and the deep faith to come through that stronger today than you were before? Yeah, it was really one of the most intense intense uh, experience in my life uh, and uh, I was 30 years old uh, uh, when they discarded discovered a, a tumor uh, um, uh, uh, mamir how do you say it uh, um, benign, testicular benign, cancer. testicle cancer, uh, uh, right. there's benign and, and uh, oh, the yes. malignant 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 yes and 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 you know at, at the beginning my instinct was um, Uh, to, to you know to it, it didn't spread in my body it, it could but it didn't at, at that point the diagnosis and and at the first 
you know, first uh, uh, part, uh, when I reacted, I said, okay, let's make an operation and, and you know, come back and live my life, uh, you know, uh, to, to my routine. And then I said, my, uh, after that, I said, you know, if I wouldn't take responsibility of, uh, of uh, what, what caused this cancer to, to, to uh, become in my body, and and uh, you know and change bad habits if if they, they were a part of my lifestyle that brought me to be ill and and, and get out of balance uh, so even if i take the the tumor out and, and I, I won't change my bad habits or take responsibility it can come again and even bigger or stronger you know you, you hear many people that, that went through cancer one time and then it comes back again and again and what I felt very strongly that, you know, I have to go to the root of the story. It's like a tree, you know, if the roots of the tree are sick, no matter how, 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 you, how much you take care of the branch or the fruit, it's, they're still going to uh, grow up sick because the root is sick. You have to, you have to go to the root. The root is, it's, it's, I started what, what I say, a, a, a training camp of my life that I'm searching for. Mm ways and tools and and study how how can i live my life in a, in a more happy more balanced more healthy way in all aspects also the physical the mental and the spiritual so i, I started to learn about nutrition at that point i didn't uh, uh, eat healthy uh, nutrition and i started to see what i eat and how much and 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 you know and if it's it's organic later on you know if it's kosher uh, then also you know about uh, uh, physical activity to do it in the in the right measurement you know swimming or, or yoga or uh, running or sweating good being in the nature to see how good it's it's, it's to be outside and with the, 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 the in the in the beach or in the forest or, or places with with good air and and good uh, vibration that you know will help to be more balanced also about the spiritual aspect learning and studying and seeing how the 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 uh, being nervous or, or 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 the fears or the jealousy they're all um they're all um, cause the body to be sick eventually you know other than the uh, rather than the being happy being loving being giving and today the science uh, uh, can prove it by you probably know the that uh, the term in the clown clown uh, doctor yeah in in mm -hmm. hospitals mm -hmm. they, yeah right Clown duct, how do you call it in, in the US? Like clown therapy. Yeah, they're like clown therapy. They come to, to get right. the, the sick people smiling and, and laughing and see how it affects the body and and and, and get the, the, the energy flowing. So there's a lot to do with our mind and our body and our soul and, and also getting stronger with faith. This was before me getting to uh, yeshiva and getting to the world of the Torah, but I was at that point deep in my spiritual journey and I got stronger and stronger in faith that there is, you know, I, I do, I didn't call it the Kadosh Baruch Hu, but you know, that there's one source to all of this life or existence. And you know, everything that's happened is happening for good. And it gave me strength to deal with this uh, disease, to pray for help, to pray for guidance, uh, to pray for the courage to, to take responsibility and change my life. And eventually this, um, this uh, cancer, this disease, uh, this curse became a blessing because mm -hmm. uh, when I came out of it, eventually I also made the operation and I combined all those way alternative and, and, and conventional. And, and <clears throat> I, I, it's like was being born again, you know, and living my life until today in a much more healthy, balanced, happy and, and aware away and taking responsibility on, on my my life and my choice chosen what they choose uh, for a blessing Amen. and uh, not for a curse i want to yeah. go back to the yukon story for a moment based on the faith story and something that your backcourt teammate ray allen um has done over the last couple of years and that has been an ambassador for the education of the shoah right ray allen yukon husky fan or yukon husky legend hall of fame Boston Celtics, one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. But in fact, he took a trip to Auschwitz, to Poland, and then he served on the board of the United States Holocaust Museum. Um, have you ever spoken to him over the last uh, number of years about his journey um, in really educating the world about the Holocaust and the importance of the, the Jewish story? 
Yes, I, I actually also spoke with him and, and really regarding this issue especially, it was very, very, for me, inspiring and touching to hear that. And, uh, and uh, um, really, I read in one paper article about him that he, he said when he came to uh, Auschwitz, I think, he, he really felt that it was a re reincarnation of, 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 you know, somebody in the Holocaust. It's really a, a very unique story. And very, very, uh, like I said, uh, inspiring. And, uh, you know, Ray was always, uh, he had an extra value in him, not only a player, he was very, always in class, always. Uh, wow. Atzili, how do you say Atzil? Atzil, uh, Atzil, you know what's Atzil? Atzilin. Atzilin. It's, uh, how do you say? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, Atzil is like uh, in the, in the, in the palaces or in the, Atzil, Atzilut, it's like there's a world of Atzilut, Atzilut. Like a noble. Noble, noble, noble. Yeah. He was in, in a noble way, yeah, a very classy way, a very noble way. You know, as successful he was, he was he also was humble uh, and, and a special guy to, 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 you know, go with him this journey. Uh, and, you know, I believe we're going to meet uh, in the future again. I mean, well, hopefully you'll uh, come here to yeah. LA and we can do that together. No, uh, or, you quick... come, or you come to Israel. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> uh, here's a quick clip of you and Ray Allen actually Madison Square Garden. I want to talk about this for just a moment. That's ties it at four. Reeves did a great job with that rebound. Sheffer weaves and delivers tonight. Oh, Travis Knight, TK down the lane. Sheffer with the great look. Two man. What was it like playing in Madison Square Garden? We like to say it's the Mecca, but today we'll call it the Yerushalayim of basketball. Mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden, where everything happens. Uh, take us through that and the Big East tournament. The Big East is, it was the it was the beast back then. What was it like yeah. representing UConn? And also, I want to ask you, what was it like representing Israel? Because today, if you were on a college campus in your profile with being an Israeli athlete, do you think it would have maybe gotten a little more pushback with BDS and anti-Semitism than the love that you received back then? Yeah, you know, uh, we can never know, but obviously things are changing and, and, and as well the reactions and the welcome or not. Uh, back then I didn't, I understood that people expect me or see me as, you know, a representer and an ambassador. But in, in my eyes, you know, I just want to play the game, you know, simple, enjoy, try to win, do my job, do my best. And it was, I think it put, put on me a, a pressure that was hard for me to deal. And during the year, especially when, since I retired, you know, but when I started my spiritual journey in the Chuva, and, and more and more when I'm, when I'm get, getting deeper in the world of the Chuva, is the understanding that, we are a global vision village and we have uh, in all of us we have responsibility and we affect each other to the good or to the to the bad and obviously when you are a famous person that a lot of eyes of kids of youth of people are looking in, uh, up to you you have uh, extra extra reason uh, to a lot of extra reason to take uh, even more responsibility and but this did, 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 this started later on in my life in my career in my life at that point I just wanted to play the game, do my best. Didn't, didn't see myself in any way as an ambassador, although although people, you know, expected me to, to act like that. I hope I did a good job. You definitely did a good job. I know, as I said earlier, right, as a child, the Jewish community knew that when you came to town, right, that we were going to go, obviously, to cheer against you. That was important, remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but really to cheer for you because we knew what you represented for our community, that we could reach, not just reach that level of physicality, but also reach that level of ambassadorship for the Jewish people and the, the, the people of Israel as well. Um, what does your spiritual life look like today um, in terms of tefillah, Talmud, Torah, right? Let's go early back on. You said all of those things were not even part of your life, part of your consciousness, but today, how does that blend look? It's uh, the Torah is, uh, uh, you know, bring a lot of, lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, spread a lot of light in, uh, in, into my life, you know, on my life, into my life, uh, you know, really help me to, to, to uh, uh, live my life in a balanced way, connect a lot of parts of my life from the past to the future, to the, to the present. 
uh, with the basketball and, and and the Buddhism and the shamanism and the, and the family life and the you know and the tefillah and the Torah all comes together. These are sources, the, the main sources today in my life, the, the studying the Torah and, and the tefillah to uh, to to help me to be a, a, a better person, uh, uh, you know, the better values, better courtesy. That that for me, this is the most important uh, <coughs> part of the journey and the biggest indication that we're really doing a, 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 a good and a, a, a work in the spiritual journey in the, in the world of the tshuva. That we're becoming a, a better better people, you know, more more, more patient, more more helping each other, more loving, more caring, more humble. Uh, and obviously, you know, it should reflect with the, the, the relationship, we, first of all, with our wives, with our kids, with our parents and, and neighbors and all, all, all the world. And I think uh, the Torah helps me to, to become a better uh, person. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a big uh, privilege that we, we're fortunate to, to, mm. to have that we can study and learn and over and over again and uh, find a lot of uh, diamonds diamonds and then and, uh, for our lives in the rough. um your autobiography i believe it's called anani which comes from the tehillim the psalms take us through why you called it anani and what that means within your life and then and then it's from the psalms uh, king david so you know he was uh, under stress, under pressure, in a, in a narrow place, in the in the spirit, in the in the mental part, in the physical part, and he prayed to God, and God answered him, Anani, he answered him, and I think in my story uh, there's a lot of uh, 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 narrow bridges that I go mm -hmm. uh, uh, through, and I you know pray to God, and he answered, he answered all the time. It's interesting that most of the time Anani uh, uh, shows up in Tehillim. It's uh, it's Aneni, it's in the, the future tense, and Anani is in the past. Uh, so I thought about it that, you know, Anani in the past, it means that the the, the, quest, the answers for a question are already there. We just have mm. to reveal them, okay? Rather than what will happen, it's already happened. Now we have to discover what happened. And this is a, this is a, a new way to look at the things. And I today when I see my career looking, you know, back and when I wrote the book especially it, it shed light on the, the story it's amazing to see how God prophecies is all over the way you know and you say you don't know who will win who will lose but then you see it like nobody can write this story better uh, getting all the pieces in the puzzle get together that it's really um, uh, uh, fascinating to, to watch and see and get get the lesson for that to, to get uh, stronger in, the, in, 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 in faith faith and emunah it's one of my favorite Tehillim. In fact, I focus on the first part, the Minha Meitzar, and Meitzar from the narrow straits, but also Mitzrayim. The Mitzrayim is not just this physical place, yes. but rather it's the yes. spiritual distresses that we will all face. I mean, we're in a pandemic, and whenever this ends, we don't know. But Anani, I love that, right? The answer is there. Now let's begin to really look for that. See what uh, happened already. Yeah, It's already happened. We have to reveal it. And... Uh... And it makes it, you know, uh, interesting and cur cur curious about it, but with a lot of faith that that good, good, good will reveal. <laughs> so one more basketball question and one more faith question. If the audience has any questions, you can feel free to put it in the chat, and we'll maybe ask uh, Daron a question as well. Regards from Tamir Goodman. He uh, loves you, Daron. Hopefully, you'll see each other in the state of Israel. Um, the basketball piece that you did something pretty amazing. You went to a small team up north and you ended up beating Maccabi Tel Aviv. And uh, you, you beat all the, the Tel Aviv teams, but then you actually go and play for them. Uh, tell us a little about the Maccabi Tel Aviv experience and what that means to uh, the land of Israel within the Euro League and the greater sports world. Yeah, Maccabi is the, is the you know, best team ever by far in Israel with a, a very special tradition, with a very... Uh, image of, you know, winning is not everything, but it's the only thing, you know, very competitive. <laughs> uh, and it was very intense years. I think uh, my time there, obviously, a very special experience and, and, and special moments on the court, off the court. But I think mainly what it did for me, the time in Maccabi, it accelerated my, my spiritual journey. Because of it was so intense, so I went through 
different kind of crises and, and, and narrow bridges, yeah, Mina Mitza, and that ignited my fire to search for answers, you know, what, what's happening and, and, you know, how can I, I, I find peace and balance in this intense uh, world? Um, and uh, I think it, it helped me eventually become a better player, but mainly a better, better human being, a better person. Yeah, by, by, by starting the search and, and getting deeper and deeper um, in my journey. So what's next on your journey in the uh, sports world or in the uh, faith world? So in the sports world, in the, in the last uh, years since I retired, more than 15 years ago, I, I, I mainly focus on working with kids, youth, also adults, but taking the sport, taking the game as an educational, mm -hmm. therapeutic uh, tool and uh, teaching through the game about life, not not the competitive part, but rather the educational part and making a tshuva for the game. The Rambam okay. 18 years ago talked about, you know, physical activity as something very important as a part of working God because you have to be healthy and happy, but on the right measure, not in the way that we do it today in the professional world, that it's not healthy because mm -hmm. it's too intense. And when the body needs to rest, a lot of time they take injections or pills and you know and, until the body collapses, and there's many stories that people suffer for years and and and, uh, and that's not healthy that's not balance and you know all the running about this uh, after the score and the trophy a lot of time cause a lot uh, negative things you know between uh, uh, fans or players or whatever so so today it's doing it from from, from the healthy part from the balance part and, and through that, I, I quote a lot of time Michael Jordan, he said the game was a visa for, it, for, for the fans. And I feel that very much that, you know, through the game, I get to meet a lot of people from different ages, different backgrounds that invite me to, to lecture, to make basketball clinic, that read my books. And now I try to give them something that I believe is much more important than a, a three-point uh, basket I, I, I score in the game or a trophy I won. It's something much more deeper and important for life. So this is what I do, especially with, with the game. And like I said, I study Torah and praying and trying to combine all the world. Torah for me is, is life. It's not about only synagogue or, 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 or um, uh, studying. It's, it's, it's mainly living the Torah and, and bringing it to, to, to the marriage world, to, to the uh, you know as a father as a son as a basketball uh, when I when I work combining the world the spiritual with the material to the kodesh with the whole and yeah. this is the this is the Torah Chaim it's it's getting everything together one God and do it do it uh, you know win win situation there's no losers in this game it's a, it's a much bigger game important game and everybody uh, uh, can win and should win. The Michael Jordan, that's in Masechet Brachot Daf Kaf Gimel, right? Michael Yarden, Michael Yarden. <laughs> that's amazing. You know, usually the last question I ask is, is there faith in the sports world? And you didn't only answer that, but you explained how, not that it's in it, but actually the, the interwovenness. So my last if question. It's, yeah. if, it's in, if it's in us, it's everywhere. Yes. If yes. it's not in us, it's nowhere. You can be in synagogue without faith. You can pray three times a day without faith. Yes. If it's here, you know, in the body, in mind, and so so it's everywhere. So the last question, Daron, and just thank you for your time. But what, what is the message to our youth, right? Every child that sits right here and says, I want to be a professional basketball player. What's the message to them and what's the message to their parents? You know, we talk, I talked about values and education and, and, and courtesy and those for me, the, 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 the biggest goal in my life. And this is what my message, message maybe for the, for the youth and for everybody, you know, to, to, to make sure no matter what they do, play basketball, somebody works with computers, somebody is, uh, is, is studying Torah, somebody, I don't know, in, the, in, the, in Hollywood, but make sure uh, to be a mensch, to be a mensch along the way, to, 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 to make sure that you, you're becoming a, a better person uh, in, in everything you do in life. And it, this will, will bring blessing in, every, in everything, you know, when you do it for, 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 with the right intention, you don't forget the, the journey along the way and, and you do good deeds. So these are victories, you know, no matter what the score would be, you, you already won a bigger game. 
that will stay forever. You know, Nitzachon, it's for, from the root Netzach. Netzach is mm-hmm. forever because Chazal came to, to tell us that yes. a, a, root, a true victory will stay forever. And that's, that's a good deed. Torah, Mitzvot, and Maasim Tovim. So I wish the kids, you, the parents, and all of us, myself also, you know, so we'll have a lot of Torah, Mitzvot, and Maasim Tovim. Amen. In fact, that was the bracha that I just gave the bat mitzvah uh, this morning at Shacharit, mm-hmm. that uh, she will be blessed with the Shechina and God's presence of Torah Chupa and Masim Tovim. Daron Shefer, it is an amazing pleasure to uh, meet you. We hope that uh, when things calm down, you'll come over to the United States mm-hmm. and we will uh, have the opportunity to do Torah mitzvot and Masim Tovim, maybe Chupa one day for somebody, uh, but uh, be part of our Sinai Temple basketball camp and God willing, uh, we will be with you in Amirim, in the land of Israel, as you will show us yes. that combination. Everybody come to the, the big celebration in Israel, you know. We're, we're waiting for everybody to come together. <laughs> Amen. So, Daron Shepherd, Yukon Huskies, Maccabi Tel Aviv, but as he just said, and Rabbi on the sidelines, intersection of sports and faith, the epitome of a mensch, truly of a good person. Daron, Tadaraba, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.